I'd also like to thank uh, um, Sher Sherry Mitzel, too, for uh, setting this assembly all up with your advisory classes, too. And thank you all teachers for allowing your advisory classes to come here. And thank you guys for already being an awesome audience. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> called The Magic of Success. Because throughout life, I've found that there's five secrets that I've found that helped me to become successful, and I want to share those secrets with you today. Those five secrets, uh, and we'll talk about more of them in detail here shortly, but those five secrets are imagination, believing that nothing's impossible, setting goals and achieving them, education and practice, and then using your gifts and your talents. So those are what I consider the five secrets of success, and if you try these five secrets, uh, you'll find that they will help you to be successful. Now the first one I want to talk about, oh, actually, you know what, before we talk about the secrets, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what success is. First of all, success is, I believe, very personal. Uh, some of you might define success as being, you know, uh, being really rich or being wealthy. If you make a lot of money, you're successful. Hey, that's okay if that's how you define success. Some people might define success as, you know, all the stuff that you have, the, the toys, the bling bling, the big screen TVs, the nice house, the fancy cars. That might be a measure of success for some of you. For some of you, the measure of success might be um, the, uh, the, the position you have in life. If you're an attorney or a, a doctor or a police officer or a teacher or you know, whatever it is that you want to become in life, your stature, your position in life might be how you measure success. That's okay if you measure it that way. Some of you might measure success by the amount of friends that you have. If you have a lot of friends and they're great friends, you might consider yourself successful. Some of you might measure success just by being happy in life. If you're happy in life you might consider yourself to be successful. The first secret is imagination. And I, I talked a little bit about that. Uh, you know, I kind of alluded to that with the bowling ball trick. You know, I, I, I said, you know, imagination, use your imagination, and magical things will happen. It's true. Imagination is the foundation for everything that we have and do. Imagination is the mother of all creativity. Now, Stephanie, how is your imagination? Do you have a good imagination? Pretty good one? Okay, Stephanie, I want you to, in your imagination, I want you to think of any four-legged animal that roams the earth. Any four-legged animal that roams the earth. You got one? But don't pick dog or cat. That's too simple. I want you to go exotic. You got one? What is the animal that you were thinking of? A giraffe. A giraffe. Would you like to change your mind? <laughs> she says no. Okay, so we're going to go with giraffe. I knew she was going to say giraffe because before I got here, I had drawn a giraffe on the very next card. It's a very rare breed of giraffe. It's the short neck version of the giraffe, yes. You laughed last week it was a gecko, an aardvark, and an iguana. Okay. Now, Stephanie, thanks for letting me have some fun with you. And then somebody said, you know what? I want to, I want to put a man on the moon and let him walk there. And a bunch of naysayers said, you know what? That'll never happen. You can't do that. And we did. And we walked on the moon. And now space flight is part of everyday life. Then they said, you know what, I want to create a, a device that we can actually pick it up, talk into it, and somebody at a distant location will be able to pick up their end and talk back. And so they invented the telephone. You know, and then they said, you know what, it would be really cool if we can walk and talk at the same time without that cord attached. They said, you know what, let's just cut the cord. 
and they made cell phones. And now we are today. We can't live without them, can we? So anytime somebody says, that's impossible, you can't do it, say, you know what, watch me, because I can. And anytime somebody says, that's impossible to me, I like to show them this. It's right in here. success. If you set goals for yourself, it's entirely possible and very likely that you will become successful. I want to tell you a story about my grandmother, and you get to be front row seats for this one. Now, my grandmother always told me something, and I don't know if anybody has ever told you this before, but has anybody ever said to aim for the stars? <laughs> yeah, or dream big, or you can do what you want to do, or you can be what you want to be. I think that's the army. But uh, yeah, anyways, it's just nice ways of saying, hey, I believe in you, you can be successful, as long as you aim for the stars. And as I said, Grandma would take ordinary objects, and she'd do extraordinary things with them. She'd say, I can make this into something fun, just with a few simple folds. She'd say, look. Cream then Grandma used to take the napkin, she'd tear a hole right in the center of it, just like this. I never really knew what she was doing, but she said, don't worry, there is a point to this. I'm about to show you, but you know what that is. Yeah, go ahead and uh, hold that, hold on to that one, nice and tight. Fantastic. Now, Grandma used to tell me too, she said, sometimes if you aim for the stars, life isn't always fair. Sometimes you only come close, but at least you hit the moon. That's why she tore a hole in this. She'd say, look, that represents the moon. See, it's around like the moon. And even if you come close, you'll hit the moon. And it's better to hit the moon than never to have aimed for the stars in the first place, Betty May. And she said, you know what? Even if you aim for the stars and you only hit the moon, she said it won't matter because in my book, you will always be a star. <laughs> Education and practice. Now, I will tell you... Uh, uh, you know, you know a lot about education, so I'm not going to preach about that. You're, you're in school today. That's the part of education you know about. But even after school, after college, when you get a job, I encourage you to be a student of your business or a student of whatever that is that you're doing. When you stop learning, you stop growing. When you stop growing, success tends to go away. I set goals for myself, and I had a dream once. And you see, I had a dream of not really just becoming a magician, but I had a bigger dream than that. I had a dream of becoming a rap singer. So now the only thing I need at this point now is a beat. Oh yeah! When you're living in the city and you're hanging on the street you gotta keep an eye out for the people that you meet. I'll tell you all a story and it ain't real funny cause it's all about the day that I lost some money. Well the fellow that I met said Lucas was his name. He asked me if I'd like to play the three card game. He said I know you think you've seen this game before but instead of only three cards I play the game with four. Oh yeah. Three of the cards he showed to me had nothing on their face but there was a fourth card on his face. There was an eight in the Oh, yeah. Now, this last secret, though, is using your gifts and talents. And I've been fortunate enough to uh, have been able to travel around the world doing that. Um, I picked the licking rings, though, because I, I've true, I truly believe that all successful people 
one day are linked together. And so the song that I do this to is called Somewhere in Time because, as I just said, I believe that somewhere in time, all successful people are linked together just like these rings. So my rendition of the linking rings. measures 20 inches by 20 inches by 30 inches tall. The outdoor of the box is locked with a key. There's a cargo strap that encircles the entire cabinet that gets pulled tight. And lastly, there's a solid stainless steel security bolt locked with a master combination padlock. And uh, in just a moment, I'm going to have my wrist bound in regulation handcuffs. And I'll be secured inside of the cabinet, locking all the devices as they go. And then I'll make an attempt to escape in plain view right before your very eyes. Okay, um, Cody, if you grab, stand over here on this side of the box. Stand, up, stand right over here on this side of the box, Cody. Hold on to the box. And now, Ms. Hetzel, if you turn the box, help, help, help me turn the box. Yep. Okay. I'll be kneeling over there. There. Hi, over there. Okay, straighten me out there. Okay. Now, Cody, go ahead and, go ahead and close the door. Okay, slam it shut. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I want you to go ahead and turn the key down. Miss Mitzel will show you how to do that. Turn that key down for me. Good. Lock that lock. Okay, very good. Okay, now place the key on top. Now, uh, go ahead and close the uh, close the security hasp and, and lock that padlock on top of it. Let me know when you're done. Okay, yeah, nice. It's kind of loud in here. Remember, orient so you can read it. How you doing? Good. You got to start again? Okay, let's get Take your time. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Let me know when you got started. Sorry. No, that's okay. Take your time. I still have air. I've got enough air for at least a minute and a... <laughs>
Mike with a shout out. The cover here is Magically Speaking, and I wish you all the success that life has to offer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. What was your favorite trick? Probably like the box thing, just because like I have no clue how I got out. <laughs> three, three. What was your favorite trick? Our favorite trick, uh, the box was very interesting. I like the rings. The rings was pretty sweet. I'm shocked. The three, I like the the three cards. The, the three the card trick scared me. Bowling ball in the beginning was definitely the greatest. <laughs> I'm it was off. And the wrapping. I, I just thought the spit. wrapping was good. Did you like the show? Yeah, yeah it was, was pretty, pretty sweet. Cool. What was your favorite trick? Um, the last one. Yeah, the last one was pretty sweet. I thought it was going to walk yeah. out. We were all like, expecting him to come out from yeah, the Yeah, seriously. Okay. Did you like the show? Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite trick? The ring. I like when he was in oh, the I did like the rapping the and doing the cards. Whoa, yeah. that was a lot at one time. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what was your favorite trick? I like the ring. I like the box. I like the box a lot. I liked when he was rapping and doing the card trick. <laughs> Thanks. Did you enjoy the show? I thought it was awesome. Very good. What was your favorite trick? Uh, the, the guy in the box at the end. That was really cool. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> did you think he was going to make it? I yeah, really, really didn't. I, I was wondering when it was uh, moving around. Like I'm running in another door or something. I thought it might have been a trick. <laughs> but he didn't. He did it. I don't know how he did it. And I noticed that all the kids were watching. You know, a lot of times in these kind of things, the kids were talking. Everybody was watching. I thought it was awesome.